This video is brought to you by Slate Black Industries. For grips and accessories, visit slateblackindustries.com. So here we are. Just as a heads up before we get into this, you'll see me missed a few at the 250 mark, which is normal. I'm figuring out my cone of fire, you know, where to adjust and everything. Off the left edge. Like barely on, like scrape the left edge of the target. Okay, so I should push it to the right a little bit then, huh? But when I hit the 400 and 450, I miss a substantially more amount of targets than usual. Partially, that's me trying to figure out how the sights work. But that actually put me on a research path that I think you will find more interesting down the road in the discussion. At least I found it interesting enough to find one of these and purchase one myself. We'll see you at the discussion. 150. Impact. How were, uh, were those center? They were just to the right of center by maybe an inch to an inch and a half. Okay, that's a lot better than when we zeroed it then, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, 200. Impact. Dead center, nice. All right, I'm on at 250 as soon as you're ready. All right, low, right underneath the plate. Okay, your elevation's spot on now, but that was off the right by about a third of a plate. Off the low left edge. Impact. Okay, that was... Um to on the right edge of the plate, plus maybe just, I just saw a shadow or just a, an edge of the view in between the plate. Okay, well and that just hit the right edge. Impact. That was on the center line of the plate. Okay, yeah, I have to aim way on the left side, on the right side. So basically, let's say if this were the plate, my front sight is right here. You see that? So why don't you just drift the front sight, Henry? I'm just hesitant on, on altering rifles that, that come in their original form, you know? Especially if they're older, right? All right, well, I'm on at three. Impact. Impact. We've also got wind that's just picked up from our seven o'clock position, so. That's great. All right, I'm at 350. Impact. It's off the right. Okay. Impact. That's neutralized. Nice. 400. Impact. Someone tagged it with something very small right before you. 
All right, just short. Just came in just short. Good windage, though. Just underneath the plate. Hmm. All right, that was short again. Okay, got that one just off the left edge. Okay, so elevation was good on yep, that one? on that one it was. Right uh, by almost the target. It was at the right leg of the target. Okay. So full target to the right on that shot. Impact. Okay. Did you end up bumping the sight? I did. I bumped the sight to 400 uh, to get a basically a dead-on hold to it. And you were holding dead on at 400? Uh, dead on just high a little bit. Because earlier you were saying the 300, it was so low yes, that it, it was, was hitting the ground, so I bumped it to 400. Okay. Yeah. I don't know the characteristics of the 7.7. .7. I mean, people say it's like a 303, but uh, I mean, this is the sighting system, everything's still different from the 303 to me. Gotcha. No impacts, no splashes. Oh, it's going to be one of those days, huh? Okay, just off the right edge. Okay, that was... Third of a target right. Okay, just high. Just low on the left edge. Impact. Okay, this is, uh, I was aiming on the left edge this time. That's right where the impact was. Okay, that one was low. Impact. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna bump it to five and then just use the six o'clock hold then if it's really low at 450. Okay, sounds good to me. Okay. I'm on at five. Impact. Nice. Ready. Impact. Well, that was easy on the sure. last one. Nothing like finishing 500 with two in a row. That's always <laughs> good. Should we head over to the debrief? We shall head over to the debrief. Okay, so let's unpack what happened here. I first got feeling like any Western trained shooter would be the sights are terrible. What were they thinking when they developed something like this? Uh, for a target rifle, the Type 99 may not shine, say, like the Finnish M39 Mosin Nagant, which is the record holder for this course currently. Done. That was a clean, clean run. Now I gave this some more thought. The bottom line is, after the research, I ended up liking this design so much that I had to find one, purchase one, and keep it in my collection as one of my own. Perhaps the most striking feature to the Type 99 is that it has anti-aircraft sights. Now, one of my Japanese-speaking friends... Hi, I'm Odvias. ...has a really nice video on how these sights work. To fire at an aircraft, the shooter would need to set the range on the ladder, and then estimate the speed with which the aircraft was crossing his field of vision. He would align the front and rear sights in the projected path of the aircraft, then fire Fine. as it across the appropriate marking. But I think these AA sights have distracted us from the actual sights picture. Think back. Of all the nations who have immense focus on target accuracy, Finland, Switzerland, Sweden, Russia, post-war Norway, all had U-notch and square post front sights. 
Great Britain, Commonwealth countries, the US, square post front sights with a tight rear aperture sight. Now the square post front sight is an incredibly advantageous tool for the field marksman to gauge and hold off for windage. And the U-notch or a tight aperture rear is very advantageous for maintaining a level of precision for the rifle. The Japanese, on the other hand, have a wide center leaf aperture sight with a barley corn triangular front sight. Why? It simply does not add up until I considered the Japanese fighting doctrine. Close range, aggressive, always fast moving, low light skirmishes. The Type 99 is a uh, relatively short, it's lightweight, and it's a fast cycling cock on close action with sights that I've learned are extremely advantageous when you're engaging the short 100 to 200 meter targets, a torso size targets, or moving targets. Consider the comparison between a Lee Enfield and a 98K action. You can see how fast the Lee Enfield's cock on close action is when compared to the Car 98K cock on open action. But here, the main difference between the Type 99 and the Lee Enfield number no. 4 is the perceived sighting speed with the rear sight and the front sights combined. The Type 99 uses a cock on close Mauser action. Butts are smooth, really fast. Clips load very slick, and your sight picture is picked up extremely fast, almost like a shotgun set of sights. Compare that to the slow, but superbly long-range accurate Finnish Mosin Nagants that we have. Now maintenance for the Type 99 is extremely easy. Japan was the first nation to chrome line their issued rifle bores, and the Type 99 is amongst one of the easiest rifles to disassemble its bolt. This gave me a revelation. The Japanese, when they issued the Type 99, they weren't chasing some type of a Wunderwaffen like the Germans were throughout the entire World War II. They wanted something dependable enough, light, nimble, fast to acquire moving targets, easy to shoot in both full light and low light conditions. They wanted something that they could also logistically have the capability to manufacture. The Type 99 they could manufacture without massive overhaul to existing Type 38 assembly lines and they would then spend less time doing R&D and spend less resources that they did not have on hand. Now, if you look at the examples shot during this exercise, Brandon from the gun room loaned me his Type 99 with AA sights and a full mum to shoot during the uh, actual practical accuracy segment. And you could see that the Japanese resources were already waning. It lacks the monopod attachment already, so there's already parts that were deleted. And if you looked closely, the stock actually has bayonet gashes all over it. Mine right here that I picked up at a later date was a rougher example. The receiver was not a polished receiver, but it still retained the full mum and anti-aircraft sights. Chrysanthemums were often ground off of the receivers of surrender rifles, so do not disgrace the Emperor. The two examples you see in this video are US capture rifles. Mine has a matching bayonet with plenty of chatter marks, and my rifle also has 43 notches going down that are cut into the side, and on the butt plate, 
it has a US service member's name and service number engraved in. Whatever chilling history these two rifles hold, we will never know. Now the Japanese worked in five or six man working parties is what they called them. Um, the small shock forces, scouts, uh, sappers to maneuver fast and strike at vulnerabilities in the enemy's lines, oftentimes at night when most Western troops were resting. Now these rifles would have been an extremely useful tool for a light and aggressive force to assault an enemy in a sub 100 meter range under low light and extremely humid conditions. Now the Type 99 certainly came up against the number four in many battles and later on the Springfield 03A3 with the arrival of the Marines, the US Marines. And putting it into the context of jungle skirmishes certainly it gives this a lot more merit of the deployment. But, at the end of the day, as nations were still bickering over which bolt action was the best in the game, America, with technology, and with what the Axis forces did not have, manufacturing capability. We shall need everything that we have and everything that our allies have to defeat the Nazis and the fascists in the coming battles on the continent of Europe and the Japanese on the continent of Asia and in the islands of the Pacific. Now, my family actually fought the Imperial Japanese Army to the extent that my family members actually had bounties put on their heads. And I am in no way endorsing the behavior of Japanese troops in World War II especially in China. However, I think that the Japanese Type 99 is an extremely misunderstood rifle in the Western world, where we would choose a target rifle, target accuracy, over combat accuracy for combat rifles. I think the Japanese wanted a surefire way to arm their extremely aggressive and nimble troops I had a lot of fun with almost rediscovering principles of marksmanship in the assessment of the Type 99. And I'm honestly considering, potentially, doing a mini-series on comparing and contrasting the mad minute potential of World War II manually operated rifles. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section. Bear, kill it! Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our newsletter at slateblackindustries.com where you can get updates on 9-hole review publications and access the Practical Accuracy Scoreboard to help you argue with people on the internet on which rifle performs better on the Practical Accuracy course. We maintain this newsletter to be majority gun content with 9-hole reviews updates per every email with less than 33% marketing content. Subscribe today on slateblackindustries.com Seven one six is Zero Nine Six Four Vic Eight Pack Red Con One Green to Green Top Copy Over. Zero Nine Six, this is Seven One Six Roger Over. One Six Zero Nine One One Pack.